All right, so let's let's go ahead and start our stand-up meeting. Um, so everyone looks serious for just a second. Well done. Hard to look serious when you've been told <laughs> to look serious. It's just very difficult. Uh, I'm not sure I actually pulled off actually saying that out loud. Welcome to the stand-up meeting for the 13th of July, 2021. Uh, today, we'll talk about what we've been doing over the past week, what we'll be doing over the upcoming week, and whether or not we have any roadblocks or needed resources. Uh, Paul, go ahead and uh, and tell us what you know. I know nothing. I have no progress to report over the last week. Okay, very good. But you're standing by to help with uh, remote labs. And you have been very helpful uh, with remote labs. So thank you. Uh, and I'll I'll need your help again today and tomorrow. All right, Thomas. Um, yeah, so, well, didn't do anything last week because it was on holiday, but the week before I was looking at the GSDB um, interface. So it's basically the, the interface that will take the data from the DVB transmitter and then format it into the, basically the serial link that goes to the Allen devices chip. So I have a, basically a um, block diagram in Vivado which I think is probably 90% there. Um, so looking forward, I need to basically try and run that on the actual hardware and see where it falls over. So um, yeah, the first step will be getting connected up to the sync board with the um, ADI transceiver attached and then yeah, start running it and see where, where, where it goes wrong and then fixing it. Okay, great. Uh, we'll do our best to help with that. And I'm sure I'll be asking you for more details very, very soon. Um, hi, Michelle. Hello. My report is that I was uh, battling uh, upgrade uh, issues with Vivado, then uh, that I've documented a little bit. Uh, the newer version is buggy, uh, but I have my old version still operating. Um, so I actually, I've been, uh, I've been working on a project myself here, not to do with ORI so far, but it may have some influence. So I'm actually experimenting in just laying out on, on a design a um, flexible uh, carrier or carrier generator board. So for between six, six gigahertz to 40 gigahertz, I want the ability to generate carriers um, on demand because of my future commercial interest. But if, that, if, if I can work out the components between marquee micro, microwave and uh, analog devices, maybe it could be a very compact uh, sub-assembly used for a variety of uh, generating carriers and maybe putting our services on different uh, uh, you know different bands I, I, I'm just uh, I just want the ability to both generate and monitor those carriers okay uh, understood and I want to do it with the FPGA involved and some mixers and oscillators involved so uh, at home I have uh, both the Spartan 7 and then the zinc processor for my own board experiments okay very good uh, but, yeah and the documentation uh, activity that I wanted to do, uh, I started to do it now, you know, now that I can load up the uh, you know, code base in the Unix version of the go on. Go on. Oh, very good. Always helps. Oh, excellent. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'll be here. I'll be here all week and uh, here to help you uh, with whatever you need. All right. Andre? Uh, nothing heard. Is Andre on mute? Yeah, so far we can't hear you yet. Um, it looks like you're. It looks like you're unmuted. Okay, I can, I can read it out loud. Okay, thank you so much, and I'm terribly sorry about the difficulties in audio. Andre says he has been trying to get the DVB encoder on the ZC706, or sorry, get to send some data, C counters, etc. Right now, he needs access to the license server and the card as well. All right, yes, we are definitely working on that. All right, you had a question, Samandra? Yeah, um, um, the vacuum chamber that we uh, actually sourced um, was tested in vacuum, like at the at the vend vendor site, and uh, they said the village horse, uh, that's uh, 0 .010, row, uh, 0 0.010 tor. So um, what I'm asking is, in a few weeks when we 
get it fully set up or uh, you know, set up at Virginia Beach, would there be any usefulness to run a test of a FPGA board or something inside a vacuum that's going up to edge of space altitude? Let me see what's already published to see if we uh, if we have that data already. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, and if not, then why not? Or you could put it on a high altitude balloon. It was a balloon flight, and we could all go and like you know blow a balloon. I mean, you need to do some picnic activity during the summer. Yeah, I, I don't okay. know. I, I yeah, really don't have uh... any experience. I don't have any outgassing. I don't have any experience in you know what happens uh, you know with uh, heat. Uh, heat conduction or lack of heat conduction. If you think about it, I mean, I think that's what, what most people are afraid of. I've just heard too many things about it. Maybe Thomas, uh, you know, in, out of Europe can say what happens to electronics and vacuum. I mean, it might be a big deal with, with FPGAs working hard. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's important, but at the moment we don't really have the kind of flight representative hardware. So it would be using more of the development boards. Which um, is a useful data point, but it's not necessarily like a qualification type step. Okay, I just don't have any experience. I wanted to get some real experience in a in a vacuum situation. Like, will the chip melt or the board melt? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think thermal is a whole um, subject that probably needs some more attention. Um, I personally don't have much experience with it, other than what mechanical engineers have told me. But that's not really. Right. So, so, so the chamber that I accidentally purchased, the chamber that I accidentally purchased um, without thinking too much of it because we bought it blind, is a thermal vac chamber. It would require a bit of TLC, but uh, according to the person who uh, plugged it in overnight to a new uh, to a vacuum pump, a Welch 7915, uh, he got it done overnight 24 hours to 10 millitor. And uh, if, if that, that's by changing out the connectors. But the old connectors can be replaced with new connectors, and we can have instrumentation into the chamber. It's a it's a full full uh, 18 inches diameter by 24 inches depth, clear, with a with a uh, uh, with a thermal uh, cooling loop, cooling or heating loop inside. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, I think we'll we'll be able to make use of it if it's uh, if it's available for for um for us. At at this point, I agree. There we don't have any any hardware that represents flight hardware yet uh and the, but there may not be uh results for some of the circuits that we're working with so uh let me let me look around and see what opportunities we we have uh, we also do have some some good thermal modeling software um that that we got at a, a, a really good discount because we're a nonprofit. um so when we we do need to do thermal modeling we at least have a uh, good Good tool chain, and there is some support in both. Uh, there's some support in MATLAB. There's some support in Valvado, and there's some support in other uh, open source uh, tools for some amount of, of thermal. Um, but we have Thermal Desktop, which is a, a good package, and um, just we just need the this the, the input, the design uh, to go to go into it. And we're not quite there yet, I don't believe. Um, yeah. but soon. So yes, um, I, uh, will there will, will there be uh, will there be a power amplifier on the on the transmit side toward, on the downlink side, right? A couple of watts power amplifier at least, or tens of watts. Uh, yes, there's going to be power amplifiers. So I mean, in a sense, I think those power transistors probably would be the, you know, the, the troublemakers. If they if they if it fails, it'll be failing due to like you know parts basically. I'm just curious. I'd like to get into those kind of you know uh, specialized fields. A little bit just to look in advance as to how to lay out the PC board. Maybe not the PTA group, but the PC group, whatever, whenever right. they get to. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Those are those are valid and legit concerns. All right. Any other roadblocks or anything that uh, needs to get brought up today? It would be good to understand a bit more about the the connection to the ZC seven oh six board because um I think that's going to become hot commodity over the next few weeks. Um. Be yeah, being able, like being able to get to it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're working it. That's uh, that's going to get some attention today. And I'll I'll put the the seven oh six at the the highest priority since it has the radio on it. Yeah, great. Thanks. Sure. Um, um, Thomas, um, is there a schematic of the? Um, sorry, uh, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but if there's a schematic of the FPGA to transceiver connection. 
uh, is that already there in the documentation trail or in development? So we have schematics for the development boards, um, which will inform the the real, I'd say, the custom boards quite heavily. But yeah, there's no, there's nothing beyond the schematic of the, the development boards at the moment. I can send you those schematics and you can have a look. Uh, could, I mean, if it, there isn't, could I take a step? I mean, in the documentation part, I mean, I'm going to be going through the, the modules, but can I draw up the schematic? Is there already a schematic I can build up on or I can start building my schematic? Because I'm good with schematics. Um, I think I might have started a KiCad project where it just dropped down the the symbols, but not much more. Um, let me have a look, and I'll send you a message in the next hour, letting you know. Uh, if you if you uh, uh, just uh, bear in mind that um, the, uh, the Eagle free version is two sheets, but you can make the size of the sheet any kind of size. So for schematic entry, if nobody has Eagle, I, I have a paid Eagle license, but I could get Eagle working and, you know, I could even do the footprints right away and we could have, almost have a board, you know, design because I, I got to do it anyway for my projects. I might, might as well just, you know, duplicate some effort. Uh, it'll be more practice for me. Okay, yeah. I mean, my personal preference is KiCad for an open source project. I think it makes a lot of sense, but, um, okay. but yeah, that's just my preference. All right. Let me, let me try out KiCad, but let, Send me a PDF of what you have, and then um, later I can load up KiCad and see how difficult it is to learn it, okay? Again. Okay, yep, yep. I'll send you data dump. Uh, do we have any idea what kind of observability we need on the radio and the ZC706? I think as a first step, just something to tell whether anything's coming out. So whether that's just a spectrum analyzer or... Yeah, uh, or the like getting... I was thinking maybe getting the example project working and accessible that that might that might help all right thank you very much all right see y'all on slack yeah good. okay great thank you bye bye, -bye.